Welcome to another video. First of all, thank you for commenting on my channel. This video is based on one of your comments and I'm really glad that you are giving me ideas of what type topics you are interested in. Dual booting FreeDOS on Linux is indeed possible. Even though I wouldn't recommend to do so, this video will show you how to set up a computer with both operating systems installed. I will do this in a virtual machine for demonstration purposes, but of course it is possible to do the same thing on a physical machine. We will first create a VM, then install FreeDOS on it, and afterwards install Linux Mint. Later in the Linux Mint setup, we will need to do partitioning manually the rest of the video will be pretty much a standard procedure. If you want to know in-depth instructions on how to install FreeDOS, please feel free to see my other videos for a step-by-step -step guide. While you are watching me doing the work, I would like to explain why I would always prefer using virtual machines over installing multiple OSs on a physical machine. The first reason is security. When using dual booting, one operating system could theoretically always access the data stored in the other OS. Therefore, one security leak in one of the systems could lead to a major security issue. VMs, on the other hand, are isolated against each other and the access from the VM to the host can be controlled. The second reason is usability. If anything breaks in your bootloader, you probably won't be able to access some of your insta installed operating systems. Probably you will only be able to access one of the installed operating systems, maybe none of them. It can be a mess to clean up a broken bootloader. The, th the third reason is easier migration. While it is extremely easy to export and import virtual machines, it is somewhere between messy to impossible to export single operating systems in a multi-boot machine to another machine. And the fourth reason is, in the case of FreeDOS, any machine capable of running a modern Linux or Windows OS as host system will be able to run FreeDOS in a virtual machine on top of it. The reason behind that obviously is that FreeDOS needs almost no technical resources. One processing core, about 1 MB of RAM, and a few hundred megabytes of disk space is enough to run your FreeDOS VM. The same four arguments apply if you are running Windows and want to test Linux or occasionally run Linux, Windows on a Linux environment. I would always prefer using different VMs in a lightweight host system over dual or multi-booting. With all that being said, there is or at least has been an argument for dual booting, especially in the early days of Linux. If your PC haven't had the resources to run a VM on top of your host system, dual booting could have been your only option. For me that day came when I wanted to run SUSE Linux version 8 and I wasn't, wasn't willing to forgo my Windows XP installation. That was on a 1 GHz machine with 128 megabytes of RAM about 20 years ago. Luckily it is now possible to virtualize a machine and even older and cheaper computers come with the hardware resources to do so. To sum this whole explanation up, what we are doing right here is pretty much nonsense on any type of production machine. It is more or less a demonstration of how something suboptimal can be done. That is also the reason why I don't want to go too deep and don't want to give any type of step-by-step -step instructions. In the meantime, I've created a virtual machine with one processing core with an execution cap 
of 60% for the sake of running free DOS as explained in an earlier video. I also gave this machine 1 GB of RAM and a 20 GB hard disk drive. Then I've installed FreeDOS on it, shut it down the machine and inserted the Linux Mint 2004 installation disk into it. Of course the installation progress would be similar with most other Debian based Linux distributions. The installation CD then started the Linux Live system that you can see right here. And before the installation wizard came up, I've looked around if Linux Mint had already mounted any of the free DOS petitions. Even though it didn't mount anything out of the box, we were able to access the free DOS petitions as we will see soon. In this Linux Live system, the virtual machine was pretty slow. Which is no surprise seeing what resources I gave the machine earlier. In order to save some time, the video is now running a little faster than the actual recording. The Linux Mint installation wizard tells us that the computer currently has FreeDOS on it, so it actually recognizes that FreeDOS is installed but its suggestion is to erase the whole disk which also means uh, that we would be deleting um, FreeDOS and then install uh, Linux Mint. In order to prevent the deletion of FreeDOS I then uh, obviously decided to do the partitioning manually and right here we can uh, see that FreeDOS uh, created several petitions that are about 2 gigabytes in size and only formatted one of those as a FAT32 system. Well, uh, the reason behind that uh, is probably that uh, DOS is only able to read from petitions up to 2 gigabyte which is, uh, I mean, a very decent size uh, for the usage that you had back in the days. Um, so what I'm doing right here, or what you can see me uh, doing right here, is that I am deleting all the unused petitions uh, created by FreeDOS in order to gain some free space, but I'm gonna leave the uh, original FreeDOS uh, petition alive. And then after that, I will create uh, a Linux partitioning in the free space. We are going through this whole procedure in three times the actual recording speed. Uh, probably it wasn't the smartest idea to uh, let FreeDOS do the whole partitioning uh, completely automatically since it uh, probably is uh, not the best idea to let it deal with a 20 gigabyte hard drive. Anyways, um, cleaning it up uh, with the Linux installation wizard is not too big of a problem. Um, now I'm creating a 15 gigabyte Linux root partition and a 4 gigabyte uh, swap partition. Please don't ask why I decided to choose exactly this partitioning sh scheme. Um, I don't see a reason uh, why we would need a 4 gigabyte swap partition right here. Um, but anyways, uh, there's no big reasoning behind it. Okay, now the installation progress uh, goes on in a pretty uh, standard way. Um, so I think it's time to fast forward the rest of the video, uh, enjoy some music and then come back to see uh, our final result after all.
Now that our Linux operating system is finally installed, the moment of truth comes. Quickly after the restart, the bootloader comes up that lets us choose between Linux Mint and FreeDOS. Let's see if our FreeDOS is still alive after the Linux Mint installation and all the related work on the hard disk configuration. With a few basic commands, we'll see that it still works. Now, let's try booting into Linux Mint. Even though the machine setup doesn't lead to the best boot time, Linux Mint seems to start and work perfectly. As nice as this whole setup looks like for now, please imagine that a software update changes the configuration of the grub bootloader and you're gonna have to clean that configuration up. In the long run it might come to situations like that. Dual booting pretty much only makes sense if you don't have the resources to run a virtual machine on top of your host system. Otherwise I would always recommend to use virtualization. With FreeDOS being as lightweight as an OS can be, if you have the resources to run any 64-bit system on your physical machine, you are probably almost always gonna be able to virtualize it. So in this video we have realized a suboptimal configuration, but we also talked about its pros and cons. I hope you had some fun watching. God bless you and goodbye.